believers in this video I want to talk about Babylon now not specifically talking about the ancient city of Babel where we get the name Babylon from which was the first city that was built after the flood there were cities before the flood which were built by the Nephilim and by the descendants of Cain but that's not what I'm talking about about the pre flood world Babylon is not a power structure the power structure that Babylon builds is there to perpetrate itself but what is Babylon itself Babylon which is translated as confusion comes to the following avoidance that's all Babylon is and it's this avoidance that causes the confusion why does this avoidance cause confusion? Because we're not meant to operate in avoidance. We're meant to manage the earth on behalf of the Heavenly Father so that there is life and abundance for all of us. So life and abundance is the outcome of us doing the will of the Heavenly Father. But worldlings want to avoid this great assignment. They want to avoid all discomfort by joining homogenous cults where they control and undermining one another it's by undermining one another that they get this feeling of security that's how worldlings get their sense of security by undermining one another in an homogenous group that's the security that worldlings crave for crave after i mean and it is this attitude of avoidance that's babylon this craving for avoidance is something all worldlings have and satan knows this demons know this that's why demons know that they can entice and trick worldlings easily into accepting a prison like existence without them realizing it's a prison like existence if you build a complex filled with uh, gray rooms with iron bars at the windows then everyone can see this is a prison complex and anyone who sees it would think, I don't want to be there. Well, let's say now you built a complex with luxurious rooms, so rooms filled with furniture, silver plates, filled with beautiful decorations. You also have gardens built there with artificial waterfalls. So to the eye, it appears very great. To the eye, it, it appears very pleasant. And then, Worldlings think, whoa, this is a palace. I would like to live in this palace. But hold on. To live in this palace, there are certain things you need to comply with. There are some conditions. Then worldlings, worldlings would get interested. interested. They ask, what are the conditions? Oh, we have to speak a common language. We have to avoid people that don't speak the language. We have to avoid people that don't look like us. We have to wear certain symbols. If people don't wear those symbols, then they are beneath us. Okay, we agree to all of it as long as we can live in this palace. And people end up wasting their lives in that palace, not venturing out, never establishing their own heritage, and then they die. That's how you rob them of their life and their, their future heritage that should, should have been there for their offspring. Now their offspring falls in the same pattern of avoiding life. And that's how you do it generation over generation and then you have generations of slaves that don't realize that they've been slaves all along that is babylon if you build a prison complex that's very raw nobody wants to be there build a similar complex that's quite luxurious and everyone wants to get in and that is what babylon does the paranormal that is all evil spirits together they together with their human slaves i mean together with their human with the human sellouts who worship them they construct those places where it's cities or complexes or they even generate social environments like so secret societies or whatever they do, they design these things to lure people in they overwhelm what they design with luxury and they use sexual the enticement also to attract young people 
because fallen mankind cannot handle their sexuality well. That's part of being fall in a fallen state. All human beings are born in a fallen state due to the fall of man. So demons know that they can trigger people sexually into agreeing with things that have nothing to do with their sexuality dire directly. That's why, for example, today in advertisement they often use attractive females to lure people into purchasing cars, purchasing other items. That's why um, in some branches they use females to serve the customers because it's, it's a sexual enticement that works well. Now the customers know that they're not likely to get sexually involved with um, the, the, the female stuff, but it still has a sexual trigger um, in, in, the, in the psyche that attracts people. So those sellouts, those wizards, those witches, and those people that form what we call the government and all of that, they construct those social environments together with um, those buildings, so they develop institutions. And those institutions appear powerful and secure, and that's why commoners invest in them. And once commoners invest in them, others are likely to join them because human beings want to get along, even in a fallen state. And that's how you get this thing called society, where you have communities come together and they subject themselves to a power structure in which they hand over their discernment and they listen to everything the power structure tells them. So they don't use their own natural intuition anymore. Instead, they rely on the knowledge provided by the power structure. That is what society is. And to belong to that society, you have to profit using your own intuition. Which is similar to profiting to operate fully as a human being. Because to operate fully as a human being implies that you also use your intuition. Because your intuition is quite important in daily life. Now, when you go to um, ancient Sumeria, which Nimrod built, that is what it was. You had several cities here and there, all in the same geographical area, and the human population back then, after the flood, which at the time Nimrod uh, was governing in his early years, the human population was around maybe 800,000 or 900,000 people, so quite tiny compared to what we have now, but here's the issue. They remained in that area and now they were stuck in those cities now a city itself there's something wrong with the city but they were stuck in those cities so the earth was left behind the wild the animals were reproducing like wild that was going on but human beings were stuck in just one place even though you had this whole earth realm that was available to us think about that you had the Americas, you had Africa, you had Europe, you had the big, you had Asia, you had Australia, you had the Pacific, you had all those areas which were empty of human habitation, which was fresh with uh, rainforests, with vegetation, with animals. Yet the whole earth in a fresh condition, but the human population was stuck in an urban area in what we today call Iraq between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers that's not God's plan so instead of them managing the earth as is the will of the Heavenly Father they were now following their own collective will which was negative it was negative because it was self-destructive in the long run because when human beings avoid life by holding on to cycles now the cycles will exhaust them it will they will get bored and now they will look for relief from the pressure that the cycle brings them and this relief will come in the form of violence so that is the reason why we're not supposed to be stuck in avoidance because once you seek relief from god's will you don't get addicted to defense mechanisms to get relief from the relief you're you're holding on to so you call you end up in a cell in a vicious cycle of addictions so god's plan was for the human population to spread around and to dominate the earth not to be dominated by a power structure inspired by demons so what happened when they were building 
this tower, this Stargate at Babel. The Lord knew that they were able to succeed, but the Lord also knew that once they succeeded, um, they would turn on one another. So the Lord stopped, confused the languages, and now they had no choice but to spread all over the earth. So what you see now throughout human history is that though to the fallen state of mankind, the human species always held on to this urge to avoid the will of the Heavenly Father, to seek relief, to look for an homogenous setting where people can undermine one another. That's something human being has been craving ever since the fall of men. And as we've been throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, that's how human beings operate. Now, because human beings operate like this by default, we think it's natural. What is natural is that human beings want to be around those that are similar to them. That's natural. That you feel comfortable with people that look like you and think like you, that's natural. What is not natural, what is self-destructive is it, when you only want to be around those people all the time without looking at anything else in life. Then you're avoiding life and that's not, that's not healthy. But though to the fall of men, mankind ha is sexually and socially defective in the sense that we crave similarity to such an extent that any type of dissimilarity is seen as an enemy. That's how this us versus them mentality, this black and white thinking is developed. So how do you manage this? Because worldlings can't heal themselves nor save themselves from this. They need to be saved by God himself. Apart from God himself, the only thing they can do is to manage this so they don't turn on one another. So throughout history, they manage this um, defective attitude of fleeing life by providing structures called societies in which people could avoid life successfully. But the only price they had to pay was to kill some of their own in each cycle. So blood sacrifice, killing parts of your own people, regularly, that is the price worldlings pay for this thing called society. So society depends on group members because you have several communities that form society and all those groups together form this big group. And the only way this big group can um, perpetrate itself in ease, that everyone gets along, where everyone can avoid life successfully as a group, the only way this can succeed is when there is a complex structure with um, governors, uh, superiors, slaves, and all of that. The structure is to regulate their um, violent tendencies. Those violent tendencies come from this urge to flee. They can continue this by killing their own. I'm taking a while to explain this so you get it. Society depends on the killing of its own in order to continue. Without blood sacrifice, we have no society. And in ancient times, after the fall of Babylon, the, nation, the ethnicities that came into being because of the spreading around, they were often in conflict with one another. They were. In ancient Egypt, I don't know what the name of the pharaoh, pharaoh was. It was one of those pharaohs, one of those kings of Egypt that realized, hold on a minute. When there is war, people tend to become afraid. And when they are afraid, they tend to comply more with society. So, from, so that pharaoh realized, you know what? What if we keep the news going that there is still war, even though there is no war anymore? Then people will be frightened because they perceive this a threat, and because they perceive this a threat, they'll comply more. So using fear as a mechanism of control, it was proven to be effective. So the other, other ethnicities and other kingdoms that were governed by pagans began to do a similar thing. But conflicts still remained between those ethnic groups. Since the Greek Empire, the beast, also known as Apollo, or his human name was Alexander, or we call him Alexander the Great or Alexander of Macedonia, he established world peace. That means peace between the ethnicities. And how did this peace work? All the leaders of all ethnic groups 
that means all the kings and all the people at the top worldwide had to become Hellenic. They had to become Greek in their thinking. And they were not all ethnically Greek, but they had to become Greek in their thinking and they have to worship this Apollonian cult that he established. So this Greek empire shifted into the Roman Empire. That's how the world has been ever since. Rome at the head and the world leaders are all worshipping the beast Apollo. So at the top there is unity and ease. They're all in agreement with one another. It's at the bottom level and the middle level, that's what we call the middle class, or people that, that are between the elite and the commoners, it's at that level that there's still conflict. But those conflicts are regulated by these blood sacrifice rituals that we call wars. Wars before the Greek Empire were real and often chaotic. After the establishment of the Greek Empire, that's around, the, that's in the 4th century B BC, ever since then, all wars have been hoaxes. It's controlled demolition in which from in which sometimes years from before the pagans come together and they agree which town is about to be destroyed, how it's going to be destroyed, who's going to attack, and then when it happens, the population thinks it's real, the soldiers that fight in the battles and the soldiers that die, for them it's real. Well, though for those that die it's real anyway, but those that the soldiers that survive, they are traumatized, so they think it's real and those soldiers are psychologically reinstalled in society through endearments of symbols in the form of batches, batches and all of that. So for the population it's real, there was a war. They feel the trauma of the loss, but the war itself was a hoax. It was a, a ritual to relieve the masses of their anxiety. And that's how it has been ever since. Now, civil wars that that internally people turned one another, that did happen over and over again. And when civil wars occurred, the pagans that governed the world came with other plots just to regulate and make things at ease again. And sometimes they triggered civil unrest just to bring forth some change in society that otherwise wouldn't have come. Problem, problem, reaction, solution. Or as the Romans called it, divide and conquer. So, that is how society is. It's a power structure in which people seek to avoid life while claiming they're doing the opposite. So that's what Babylon is. Avoidance. Institutionalized avoidance. And that is the default course that human beings go into due to their fallen state. Is there anything wrong with large groups of people working together as a unit? No, there's nothing wrong with it. It is an issue, however, if they work together just to avoid life. And that's what most do. That is why those churches out there, I call them Babylon churches or pagan churches. You know why? Because they're led by pagans who claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit and all of that. They're not even believers, they're pagan. And they use cycles and patterns to trap you into attending those churches. That's why church attendance is mandatory. You have to invest financially and emotionally in it. And with the moment you invest emotionally and, financially and uh, mentally, you become stuck at it. And that's, your, that's how you end up going to that place your whole life. Then you die. Just like I mentioned in, in the beginning of this video, instead of you building a heritage that will last for your descendants, you now are stuck at going to that structure all the time. So what you're doing is you're perpetrating the structure at your own expense and expense of your offspring. So those Babylon churches are Babylon. I don't care if people there are a bit kind there because they're using the influence of the gospel. If they use the influence of the gospel, of course it's going to have a positive effect on the people that's around there. You can put reprobates in a place and because of the influence of the gospel there, the reprobates will be more at ease. And because the reprobates are more at ease, they'll, they'll behave better. You may think they are good people, but they're still reprobates. When you remove the good influence of the gospel, the reprobates will act in the raw state, killing, stealing, and destroying, and devouring. So the gospel has been used since the emergence of the Catholic system, which happened in the 4th century AD, 
Since the Catholic system, also known as pagan Christianity, emerged, the gospel has been used to ease reprobates. And commoners see this good effect, and then they think, you know what, that church system is real. So they end up joining the church system, thinking they're doing God's will, they're going to see the good effect. But that good effect is just a good effect that's used to keep you trapped. But you're not operating in the good itself. You're operating in the good effect that's used by the by the gospel that's being withdrawn from the gospel. That's how Satan is pretending to be Christian and people follow him. And the world relies now on pagan Christianity to remain at ease. You know why? Because though to the influence of the gospel, blood sacrifices are not that effective anymore. They're not that binding anymore. Now the world still craves blood sacrifice and it still happens, but now they need the approval of real believers for them to be successful. That's why the pagan Christian system often kills in the name of God, in the name of Christ. Why? Because worldlings still crave blood sacrifice for society to work. But if they just commit blood sacrifice just like that, because the gospel is around, the darkness is exposed and the, and the effect of the blood sacrifice will not last. So to make the effects of the blood sacrifice last, they need to have belie need believers to consent to it. Because when believers don't speak out against it with the power they have by the Holy Spirit, the blood sacrifice can continue. So Satan needs the consent of believers to continue his grip on the human species. That's how it is. That's why demons have to pretend to be on God's side or else they wouldn't be able to do what they're doing. So demons are really hostages of believers. Yes, demons, that includes Satan, that includes Apollo, that includes both the, all the fallen angels, also the Nephilim spirits, all evil spirits, the whole paranormal is a hostage. They're all hostages of believers. But believers don't realize this. Believers think that demons are out there, powerful, governing the human species, and that we have to fight them uh, and to overcome them. No, no, minute. They are hostages. They need us to continue their rebellion against Christ. They're enemies of Christ. They're enemies of the human species. But they need believers who are the redeemed mankind to continue the oppression of the human species. That's their position. But in Babylon churches, they pretend as if the enemy is this big entity out there with a whole kingdom, with structures that we need to fight. And they're so smart, you need to watch out. Well, the reality is, they are hostages. Look, that is why I'm telling you, as a believer, you need to look at the bigger picture. That's why you need to reflect on yourself to make sure you don't have Babylon inside of you. Because the moment you have any type of avoidance mentality inside of you, Babylon is in you. And the, as long as Babylon is in you, Satan got you. Look, when things are difficult or when things become dangerous and you need to leave a, a, a situation, you do it. For example, if you're in a supermarket, someone suddenly picks up a knife because they want to fight, you just leave. Or when people suddenly want you, want you out of there, you leave because you're not going to cause any um, conflict un that's unnecessarily. If they don't want you around, you just leave. Meanwhile, things will backfire on them for being angry against you. So things will backfire on them. And later, they will comply and they'll uh, change their attitude. Or they will destroy themselves. So that you, that you de-escalate by leaving or by avoiding um, bad situation from bad people, that's a good thing. But the moment you're exclusively avoiding things just because you don't want to be left alone, just because you don't want, want, to, want to have to deal nor bother with stuff, the moment that's your attitude, you are operating, operating in confusion. You have Babylon inside of you. And that's the thing about renewing your mind. God wants Babylon out of you. Because as long as Babylon is inside of you, it's useless to fight the institutions. It's useless to fight uh, oppression of minorities, to fight white supremacy, to fight, to fight um, religious dogmas. It's useless to fight those external structures if the thing those religious structures are advancing inside of you. If they are perpetrating and advancing darkness, and darkness inside of you, when you fight them, you're just 
wasting your effort because that same thing that they are producing you have inside of you so why are you fighting them if they are providing what you have inside of you that's why Christ said my kingdom is not of this world does it mean now that believers should not advance on the earth we should advance on the earth because the earth is the Lord's the world is an avoidance mechanism that demons put in place and God's kingdom is not part of, the, of that avoidance mechanism so as long as you think in line with this avoidance mechanism called the world you are part of the world socially even though you are a believer even though spiritually you don't belong to the world anymore on a social level you still are in line and in sync with the world and because of that you will share in the plagues of the world that's why you can't be a friend of the world so on good terms with the world and be on at peace when walking uh, when walking by faith now you can you can be in harmony with the other human beings that are worldly that can happen but to, to, to some extent because they're worldlings so eventually they will agree against you to preserve the relief that they are dependent upon an addict will not go against the drug the drug dealer that supplies the, the high for their addiction because if they do that they're finished the same way worldlings will not turn on the world for your sake as a believer they won't so you can be in harmony with them to some extent as long as you're not yoked with them so believers has been a long video but i want you to think about the following do you have babylon inside of you again avoiding bad situations or the escalating situation by leaving that is not toxic that is healthy but the moment you're only avoiding because you just don't want to be bothered at all or you just don't want to face anything at all or you just want to be left alone this leave me alone attitude that's a toxic avoidance mentality that the world loves the world loves to be left alone that's why you have, you have concepts as privacy private lives boundaries and all of that just because they like to undermine one another by controlling one another this leave me alone mentality is babylonian don't have babylon inside of you yet become angry and offended when Babylon is causing harm. When you have Babylon inside of you, you are a stakeholder of the wrong they're doing. Even though they're the ones doing the wrong, you're still responsible because you are part of what's going on because you are in agreement with the thing they're perpetrating. So don't agree with the world. Agree with Christ. Be at peace.